Who is that? One of these things is not like the other. We're here today with my friend, the knockoff Invicta Tyrannosaurus Rex. Here's the original Invicta. Here's the knockoff. And, uh, wow, I should have been wearing gloves for this. Okay. Well, I'll wash my hands afterwards, I guess. This is the Laramie T-Rex. Laramie is a company that in the 80s was producing knockoff British Museum um, Invicta figures that were fully painted and obviously not really direct bootlegs because you can see that the texture is totally different. They didn't copy the mold or anything like that. They just copied the pose. Um, but clearly one was based on the other, so I'm considering this to be a knockoff. Now, some of these Laramie figures um, were actually among my favorite toys when I was a kid. I particularly remember the Laramie plesiosaur, which uh, I've since lost. I'm not sure what happened to that. Um, but, you know, I would play with it. I would play with it in the bathtub and stuff like that, uh, which was bad. And I hope I didn't suffer too many serious brain injuries from this. Because, as you can see from the title, our topic today is going to be about the sheer amount of toxic material that is in this figure and other Laramie figures. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about heavy metals like lead, antimony, and other kinds of nasty stuff that you don't want to be getting on your hands. Don't try this at home, guys. I will be washing my hands directly after this and not touching my face, uh, as I will do with all of the um, toxic dinosaurs that we're going to be looking at today. So this video was inspired by a recent uh, update to a great website called Dino Toy Collector. And uh, Stefan over at Dino Toy Collector posted a little retrospective on uh, a company, uh, I guess, known for making sort of um, chinosaurs, you know, cheap, uh, mass-produced, uh, low-quality plastic dinosaurs in the 1970s and 1980s. That article was about the company UKRD. Now, I do not have any UKRD um, dinosaurs in my collection, but one of the things that um, stuck out to me and I thought really uh, could use some more publicity was the mention that Stefan had in that article, I'm sorry Stefan if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, uh, over at DinotoyCollector.com, uh, posted that these so-called Chinosaurus from the 80s and beyond did contain many pollutants and they should be treated with care for collectors and children. Um, so he linked to a blog post about one of these um, one of these dinosaurs over at a website called Lead Safe Mama. Now Lead Safe Mama is run by a woman named Tamara Rubin and she uh, has personally tested a lot of old vintage kids toys that she noticed uh, were kind of still in use around her kids whether they had been donated at daycares and things like that, knocking around in old sandboxes. You know, people try to reuse these toys, especially these old um, cheapo dinosaurs from the 80s. You know, they were pretty ubiquitous back then. I have a lot of these. This is um, the Imperial Plastics. These are classic. You find these lots still going around on eBay and big lots of dinosaurs. This is one that I originally had when I was a kid. It's the 1985 Imperial Plastics. Um, Brontosaurus, or was this supposed to be Diplodocus? I don't really remember. Anyway, some kind of sauropod. And uh, you will still occasionally see these um, donated from thrift shops, old church basements, and stuff like that, uh, to the point where kids may still be playing with them. And Lead Free Mama recommends, you know, not to get rid of these dinosaurs necessarily if you're a collector, but be careful with them, keep them out of the reach of children, lock them up in a glass case if you have to. Because these things are nasty. I cannot believe that I was playing with these as a child. I really hope I didn't put too much of this stuff into my mouth. Let's talk about lead for a second. Lead is obviously a heavy metal. It's a toxic substance. And today, the legal guidelines for lead in toys, uh, that all toys which are sold in the United States have to comply with, is 90 ppm, 90 parts per million for the paint, and under 100 parts per million for the substrate, the plastic or whatever else is in the product. Now, 90 ppm of lead is the legal limit. Meaning if your toy tests higher than 90, 
it is deemed unsafe for sale. And let's keep that number in our heads right now. 90 ppm is the limit. Now, my old friends, the Laramie dinosaurs here, now I had this one, I also had the knockoff of the Cetiosaurus. I had, like I mentioned, I had the knockoff of the Plesiosaurus and probably a couple others in my collection. Well, Lead Free Mama tested not this specific one, but she tested the Brachiosaurus, which I'm going to assume they were all pretty much using the same types of plastic and the same types of paint. Lead was used in the paint in order to bring out the brighter colors in the pigment. Just like antimony was often used in the old days in um, makeup and stuff like that. It, it brings out brighter colors, it gives it this kind of sheen. Now, if you uh, know my other videos about the Carnegie collection, you'll know that the early Carnegies were not made of colored plastic. They were made of just flat gray or beige or, you know, whatever kind of vinyl or PVC. And then um, they were fully painted. Now, any toys that were made of colored plastic, obviously they had to have some kind of dye mixed in with the plastic in order to color it. So oftentimes, the actual plastic on these will contain more of that lead from the coloring than even the paint does, um, which is a problem because if a kid is putting this in their mouth, chewing on it, or even touching it, and then touching their face, touching their eyes, touching their mouth, which, you know, kids often do, that lead is going to go straight from the toy into their bodies. And even a little bit of lead, you know, 90 ppm, the legal limit, is not really great to have knocking around in your system. Your body kind of has trouble eliminating that, and it can cause serious problems. So when Lead Free Mama tested the Laramie uh, dinosaur toy, she discovered that it was higher than 90 ppm. The Laramie toy tested at 2,213 ppm of lead. For those keeping track at home, that is over 30 times the legal limit. This toy would be illegal to sell today. And actually, you know, I do see these on eBay a lot. Not a lot of people know about this issue. Not a lot of people know the legality surrounding selling lead-based toys like this, but I think those are probably unwittingly illegal sales that are happening on eBay. Uh, it's just so common that I guess it's hard to keep track or crack down or you don't have people testing all these old, old toys for sale because they slipped through the cracks before the, these safety standards were really in place. Turning to my friend here, the Imperial Plastics toy, like I said, I had a, a bunch of them. I had this old Styracosaurus, which is actually one of my favorites. I think it's a really cool representation of a Styracosaurus. You can see it's a little dusty because I just pulled it out of the garage. I do not keep these in my house, probably for obvious reasons. First of all, they're just kind of junky looking toys. I don't know why you can still have them. How we dispose of these might be a different topic. Um, but that's the Styracosaurus. I also have Triceratops. have a couple of these Stegosauruses knocking around probably have seen these toys before. I feel like almost everybody had these when they were kids. These are all the Imperial Plastics. They were ubiquitous. Uh, Imperial Plastics also used to make stuff like this. I don't think this is actually an Imperial Plastics. I do have an Imperial Plastics monster that's similar to this. Monster. I guess this is, is this supposed to be a Parasaurolophus? I guess it is. This is like a knockoff of a knockoff, right? This is not Imperial Plastics. It just says Hong Kong on it. Look at the bright green paint on this thing. Jeez, I hope this isn't actually radioactive as well as lead-based. I'm going to stop touching that right now. Uh, so once again, the paint on this, as well as the vinyl substrate, are highly toxic. And they actually put the Laramie toys to shame. These Imperial Plastics that were everywhere when I was a kid. And I think these are the most common ones you're still going to see knocking around in old daycares, old preschools. Sandboxes, playgrounds, places where you can have old junky toys that are sturdy enough to not get too beat up for the kids to play with. You're going to find these all over the place. There's the classic um, green and yellow T-Rex, which I also have, but I didn't bother to pull out of the garage today. Um, they tested that green and yellow T-Rex, which once again I'm assuming is made of the same kind of paint and plastic as these others from 1985, that Imperial Toys T-Rex tested at 7,872 parts per million of lead. 7,872, that's almost 8,000, which is about 80 times the legal limit of lead that I am holding in my hand right now. Why didn't I not get gloves for this? 
Got to remember not to touch my eyes or face before I go scrub those hands. Guys, this is a problem that obviously for collectors is not going to be necessarily a huge safety issue. Because really, what are we doing with these? We're sticking them on a shelf and we're looking at them every so often. You're not going to be rubbing your hands all over this and then going, you know, to eat a hamburger. I hope if you are, this is your friendly PSA, guys. These are not safe. Holding these toys can be dangerous. It can be dangerous to your health. It can be dangerous to the health of your children or your pets or anybody else in your life who may not be as cautious handling such toxic pieces of vintage nostalgia. So just be aware of that um, when you're buying these, selling these. If you're going to sell them on eBay, please make sure that you're putting a disclaimer that this is for vintage appreciation collectibles only, not for children. No kid should be, ever be playing with these. I don't know why they allowed us to play with these, or, you know, me. A lot of you guys are a lot younger than I am. But we're used to our toys being safe now. We have a false sense of security. When we look at old toys, we kind of go around thinking that they must be as safe as the ones we have now because now we have good safety standards, but it just wasn't that way in the 80s, even part of the 90s. Um, I actually went on to Safari's website before starting this video, and I wanted to check and see uh, what they said about the lead content in uh, their older figures. Um, now, they don't have any specifics about that. I'm thinking specifically about like the really old ones from the 80s, during the 80s, Safari was only making, you know, the first couple of runs of the Carnegie Collection was the only figures they made. Those seem, you know, the paint on those, just to my eyes, seems a little questionable. I think the plastic is probably okay, because it's all gray, beige, mostly. Um, nothing really colorful. I'm thinking that's probably just the base color of undyed plastic, whichever kinds they were using at that time, that were painted over, but... I would still be a little bit concerned about those early safaris. Um, now, Safari on their website does say that they have been safety testing their products uh, for over 30 years. Now, over 30 years puts you right smack at the middle of the Carnegie line, which was the first Safari products. Uh, first Safari figures, I should say, animal figures. So I'm guessing that means that they're safe, but once again, the safety standards back then that they were passing may have been a little bit more lax. So... Just be cautious out there, everybody. Dinosaur collecting can be dangerous to your health if you don't know the facts. The more you know, right? Knowing is half the battle. Thank you very much. This has been Terrible Dactyl, who is now going to wash his hands very, very, very thoroughly. Tune in next time for more Jurassic Plastic.